I know most of you probably have never heard of Daisy Bouterse, a notorious person in Surinamese history. Who was he? As a sergeant in the Surinamese army, he committed a coup d'etat. He ran a military dictatorship. On this spot, 15 of his political opponents were shot and killed. He was also a drug trafficker, fought in a civil war, and he later became the elected president. This here is the unbelievable story of Daisy Bouderse and his military dictatorship in Suriname. Keep watching. On the 25th of November, 1975, Suriname became independent of the Netherlands. Henk Adel became the first prime minister of an independent Suriname. But in the following years, the economy deteriorated. This was partly due at the pace at which independence was realized. The situation created much tension among the Surinamese population. The question rose whether Adel could lead the government, especially since he barely addressed the social problems. Aaron was accused of corruption and fraud. And despite him being accused of election fraud, he became the head of a new cabinet in 1977. But that lasted till 1980. Then 16 non-commissioned officers, among which Desiree Delano, Daisy Bouterse, staged a coup d'etat and installed a military dictatorship. The Henk Adam government was deposed and imprisoned. Both the Surinamese and the Dutch government gave this sergeant coup the benefit of the doubt. There are some rumors that the Dutch government was behind it, actually. In the years that followed, it appeared that the sergeants were not able to take on the responsibilities of governing a country. And soon corruption manifested itself everywhere. In addition, the military rulers were suspected of nepotism, uh, arms and drug trafficking, and as military repression increased, so did the resistance among the Surinamese population. Another coup followed in March 1982. By this time, a small group of soldiers, including Lieutenant Surindra Rambokas and his colleague Sergeant Major Wilfred Hawker. During this coup, part of the company defected to the enemy, to Bautas' camp. As a result, the coup failed. Hawker was executed. Hawker's execution shocked the people of Suriname. Apparently, Ken Bouterse was capable of killing anyone who contradicted them without a trial. In addition to Hawker, other influential Surinamese were arrested for complicity in the coup. Although the involvement of some of the Surinamese was not clear, they were jailed anyway. Trade unions and people of Suriname demanded more democracy and several demonstrations took place during which Bouterse was called a dictator. When, in October 1982, Maurice Bishop, the president of the Grenada Archipelago, visited Suriname, Bouterse gave him a warm welcome. During Bishop's visit to the military rulers, strikes and demonstrations took place in Paramaribo. Bouterse was outraged by the size of these demonstrations and Bishop said to him, You will have to eliminate the forces that are not for you or they will eliminate you. On the night of December 7th to 8th, Bouterse's military struck hard. At 2 a.m. they opened fire and destroyed several radio stations, the printing office of the daily newspaper and the building of the trade union federation. In addition, 16 unwitting opponents of Bouterse's military regime were taken from their baths and transferred to Fort Zeelandia on the Suriname River in Paramaribo. This was Bouterse's former headquarters. 15 of the 16 persons imprisoned were tortured and murdered that night at Fort Zeelandia. Among them lawyers, journalists, soldiers, university lecturers, a union leader and an entrepreneur. Fred Derby was the only RST to survive the December killings, states in his statement that all hell broke loose in the room where the other prisoners were still awaiting their death sentence as soon as the gunshots could be heard from their cells. Everyone started running, hoping to save themselves. As I was running, I saw Baburam, a Surinamese serviceman and fellow RST, standing against the wall, the stone wall, and he was praying. He started banging his head against the wall until he was bleeding. Derby, for some reasons unknown, was released that day and therefore the sole survivor. Bouterse later denied any involvement in the killings. Under the military regime, the economic situation deteriorated and political freedom was increasingly restricted. Poverty, corruption and black trade caused great discontent in the country. Who was also outraged was Ronnie van Brunswijk. 
A former bodyguard of Bautasse, in a 1986 interview, he stated, When I saw that he was doing everything for himself and nothing for the Surinamese population, I decided not to continue to work for him. He made all these promises that he did not keep, so many. It's not just about money, he promised that too, but nothing. He also promised that there would be free elections again. Nothing came of it. Ronnie van Bunsrijk was trained in Cuba in guerrilla warfare and he set up his insurgent army which he called Jungle Commando. This interior war, which can be considered a civil war, revolved around the control of the east of Suriname and the cocaine trade there. The army of Daisy Bouterson, the Surinamese National Army, took on the Jungle Commando. And the fighting was the fiercest from 1986 to 1989. The war particularly affected the Maroons, which were the descendants of the slaves that fled to the interior. Most notorious is what happened at Moiwane, known as Moiwane 86, which happened in 1986, where the Surinamese National Army slaughtered 30 civilians of the village Moiwane, among which pregnant women and children. Public infrastructure, roads, but also school buildings were razed to the ground. In total, around 300 civilians were killed as thousands fled to neighboring French Guyana. Peace negotiations between Daisy Bouterse and Ronnie van Brunswijk were first held in the summer of 1989 and in 1992 Brunswijk permanently ceased his struggle. Elections were held and Bouterse stepped down from power. In 2001, however, Bouterse made an unexpected comeback. He became a member of the parliament and fiercely opposed President Ronald Venetian for nearly 10 years. Despite his past, Bouterse's popularity grew among the population, which was very dissatisfied with Venetian. In addition, Bouterse and his party, the NDP, were the only party in the country that really managed to appeal to all the population groups. After all, in a multi-ethnic Suriname, most of all parties did target one specific group. This was also good for the popularity of both Bouterse and the NDP. In 2009, he returned to power, this time by democratic means, when he was elected president. His appointment led to a deterioration in relations with the Netherlands. This was because Bouterse had been convicted there, in 2000, for drug smuggling, a charge Bouterse denies. He also continues to deny his role in the December killings, even when he was sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2019. Bouters has since appealed this conviction. A recent verdict confirmed the 20 years. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to learn more about Surinamese history, click here and here. Thanks for watching. See you later.